Hi, this is Tim Davis with BitClass. In our last session, we talked about the problems that cloud access security brokers are trying to solve. So now we'd like to look at the three ways that a CASB solution will attempt to solve those problems. And the first one is through API scanning. API scanning is the CASB programmatically reaching out and connecting to a sanctioned application uh, and looking at things like the files in those applications to determine if they're shared externally, uh, shared publicly, if they contain maybe data that you don't want in that cloud application, uh, and then possibly taking some action around that, uh, around that file, maybe to remove sharing or maybe to encrypt the file uh, or uh, you know, move the file to a new location, things, things like that. Uh, actions can vary depending on what the applications allow and what the CASB supports. Uh, but that's the general idea, that the CASB is interacting directly with the application. Notice there's no user in interaction at this point. Uh, this, the, the files are already in the cloud application, and the CASB is then going back and scanning those sort of after the fact that they've been uploaded into the cloud. So APIs definitely have some advantages. They are direct CASB to app, so there's no user involvement. You don't have to worry about the endpoint, the client, the user changing any behaviors or anything like that. Another nice advantage to APIs is they can scan data that's already in cloud apps. So if someone has already deployed uh, Office 365 or Salesforce months or years ago, and now they're looking at a CASB solution, this gives them the opportunity to go back and analyze some of that data that's already in those cloud apps. And then the fact that it can take some actions, like removing sharing from a file that you don't want shared publicly or externally. But there's some downsides to API scanning as well, uh, or some limitations. Uh, one is that it doesn't do anything to control access by the users or give you visibility into the users that are using those cloud applications and what they've been doing. Remember, one of the problems that we talked about last time was that loss of visibility and control as data moved out into cloud and users moved out of the campus. There's this loss of control from access perspective and visibility into what's happening to the data and happening from the user perspective. So APIs don't really solve that problem. The data loss protection is not real time. APIs are scanning after the fact, after the file's already been uploaded, after the file's already been had sharing permissions set and things like that. Uh, they may catch things in the first few seconds. It may take a few minutes, depending on the API, how often those things are scanned, but it's not real time. And keep in mind that many leakages and, and data exfiltrations happen within the first few seconds of a file being uploaded into a cloud service. An another potential limitation is that there's no, co no control for unsanctioned applications. If you're not paying Box or some other application for a subscription, they're not going to let you connect to their APIs and control data that's in their environment because you're not, a, you're not their customer. And then there's no ability to control applications that don't have exposed security APIs. Workday is kind of the classic example here. Workday has a rich API around working with the application itself, but not so much around securing the application. And then another thing just to keep in mind here is that many of these sanctioned applications limit the amount of APIs or they charge you extra um, if you are making uh, what they consider excessive API calls. So there can be additional costs to relying solely on APIs for security in, within the cloud. So let's look at another solution, and that is the forward proxy. Now the endpoints are getting involved. The endpoints are connecting directly to the CASB who's in the path and then the CASB is connecting to the cloud application. So we've moved into more of a real-time world, and uh, it's a good thing because now we have several good things going on. We can control access to the applications, we can do data loss prote protection in real time, and then we can take actions like blocking the download of a file that shouldn't be downloaded to a device. There's three methods typically that forward proxies happen. One is through an endpoint agent, one is through what's called a proxy autoconfig or a pack file, that is pushed down to the endpoint device, or, or the third is with an in-path interception, like through a secure web gateway appliance, where traffic from the endpoint is forced through the network routing or through some other means to pass through that appliance, and then that, that then functions as a forward proxy. So this does involve some changes to user behavior. Uh, another potential drawback to forward proxy is 
it only works for managed devices. So you've either got to have that pack file installed, that agent installed, or do something to make it go through that secure web gateway for forward proxy to work. It does, you know, require some user changes as we meant because the traffic has got to be forced through that CASB for being analyzed uh, for the access control, those types of things. Scaling can be a concern, particularly if the traffic is going to be forced through on-prem appliances or through proprietary data centers. And then forward proxy can't scan data at rest. Another big advantage to forward proxy, by the way, is that it, you notice that it can address the unsanctioned applications as well, although only for managed devices. But that's typically not really a limitation. And that, you know, so this does open up the possibility of, of securing uh, data back and forth to unsanctioned applications as well. So the third method is what we call reverse proxy. Now this is a little different, so I'm going to kind of walk through the steps of how this works here. So the user connects to the application, to the SaaS application in this case, can be SaaS, can be IaaS, can be a private cloud premises app, and then the application itself redirects the user to the CASB. And this is typically for authentication, so for uh, maybe like a single sign-on process. So now the user endpoint has been redirected without the user having to do anything, redirected by the application to the CASB. The CASB is going to broker the authentication. In the case of BitGlass, BitGlass can be the identity provider. We can also partner with any SAML2 compliant identity provider, OneLogin, Octoping, ADFS, uh, you know, any of those solutions uh, will work. Once the authentication process is complete, then the session is initiated through the CASB um, between, the, between the, the SaaS application or the cloud application and the endpoint. So the advantage, the huge advantage here is that the user didn't have to do anything different. They signed in just like normal, um, but the CASB was able to get into the path and then do all those types of things around real-time controls. So reverse proxy advantages, it's easy to deploy because the configuration is all in the cloud application. It's not on the endpoint. It does support unmanaged devices, again, because the configuration's in the cloud. The cloud will redirect that user session, whether it comes from a managed device or an unmanaged device. And it can control access to the applications. So you get that rich access control and logging. You can do data loss protection in real time. Um, and then you can take actions like block downloads in real time, modify files, remove information out of a uh, download that's sensitive, those types of things. There are a couple of drawbacks to reverse proxy. Um, one is that it only works for sanctioned or own applications, right? There's no way to address an unsanctioned application within a reverse proxy scenario. And then um, it does require single sign-on. Um, some people would consider that a uh, uh, not so much a drawback, uh, but uh, it does require some kind of uh, authentication process like a single sign-on to get into the path seamlessly so that the CASB can do the security functions that, that we've talked about. So which of these methods is the best method? And I would argue the answer is you really need all of them because they all have specific use cases that they address and there's different scenarios where each one of them might make sense. APIs make sense when you have a lot of data already out in cloud and for cloud to cloud control. Where forward proxy really makes a lot of sense for controlling those unsanctioned applications. And then reverse proxy makes sense for sanctioned applications, IaaS, and private cloud premises applications because it can address both the unmanaged and the managed endpoints for access control and DLP, as well as it's very easy to deploy because you're not having to do any configuration on the endpoint or adjust a routing pass or anything like that. So that's the three methods that CASB providers will use to solve those four problems that have come about as we've moved into the cloud and mobile world. Thanks for watching.